uh, I'm Joke van der Malen. Uh, and um, what we want to say is that we just saw, you all just saw Chris Madsen, he was talking about the need level. Well, this is definitely need level and you can see it. We have our flip charts with us. We don't have a PowerPoint. Uh, so this is really emerging stuff. And here we are today to talk to you about this. We have a lot of information, so we'll let you know as much as we can in these 40 next minutes. Off you go. Thanks. Thanks for coming. This is a very special session for me. You know, I haven't really been talking about any real content since I started uh, talking about visual management in 2008, 2009. And this is when I feel that we are back with something solid, something that is new and that might become relevant. And um, as Joke said, it's really, really at the need level. Very, very experimental. We've been working in the trenches with people who are trying to do Scrum and trying to be agile outside of the software domain and outside of the product development domain. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about our experience and what we have. So we've been talking about our experiences and we've been, for two, three years, we've been trying to figure out what are the, the patterns, what are the things that really, if there is something that is different about trying to do Scrum and trying to, to be agile outside of software and outside of product development. And we have found certain things that we're going to present as kind of uh, preliminary conclusions and, and we're going to ask you afterwards for your feedback. How relevant do you think this is? How much does it apply? So we do have a lot of content. I'm going to sit down for most of it. I'm just going to be drawing here on my iPad and I'm simulating a, a, fl a flip chart, which as you know, is what I use to give my trainings. So first of all, let's agree on uh, the need, right? So we, we have been quite successful coaching teams and some organizations into a better way of working. And if you, if you would have asked me my answer on why do we do Agile, uh, the question Chris asked, the reason we say we want to do Agile is to be happier and to, be, uh, to have a healthier working environment and a healthier life and a happier life. Uh, this is what we really believe is the long-term goal of any kind of improvement. It's not more productivity, it's not more money, it's, it's more sustainability, more happiness, and a better, a better way of working and a better way of living. So it's, it's absolutely normal for us that if we are helping a software development team or a product team in an organization work in a better way and be happier, it's, it's obvious that other people who are hearing about this experience will become interested. Right? Anybody who wants to improve their, their working environment and, and get more organized and, and a more sustainable way. And this is what has been happening with organizations that do not do product development, that do not do software, or departments or areas within organizations, such as the HR area, the marketing area, etc. So we've been working, we've been working at car factories uh, where we have been coaching them into doing uh, basically trying to put all our experience into their context. And we've been helping also our own administration area at Agilar, which does uh, training registrations and manages customer, customer support and everything that has to do with invoicing, etc. So lots of administrative process. Uh, we have been discussing scenarios. For example, recently I've been discussing with Joserra on how to uh, apply our ideas to a cultural center, a center that does cultural activities. Uh, so nothing to do with product or software, but yes, maybe projects, because each event you do is a small project. Um, yeah, we even, um, back in the time in 2009 already, we, we used the same thing on, on our baby board. I don't know yeah. if you've read the visual management blog on that, that it was all uh, basically types of work uh, work that we wanted to somehow organize, but that had a little bit of, um, yeah, time dependency. Yeah. Huh? So, yeah. So we, we've discovered, so first, first, let's say pattern that we have discovered outside of software and outside of product development is that when you are working in, a, in an environment where you have a mix of unplanned work and you have a lot of small uh, projects that are not maybe um, that you cannot, so let, let's, let's put it the other way around, in, in software, right? When you start doing a software project and you have lots of dependencies and you have lots of delays, what is our advice? Our advice is create more cross-functional teams, uh, collaborate more, swarm around the problem and try to reduce lead time and reduce waiting times so that you can start and finish whatever is your top priority immediately. This is our advice and anybody who is not doing that 
we try to work out that dysfunctionality. Now, when you are in an environment that is not product development and is outside of software, this advice might not be applicable. Let's take a simple example. If you're organizing an event such as this conference, you cannot start planning the conference and finish it immediately, right? You have a delay in certain events. Why? Because you're working with, well, first of all, because the conference has a date. And obviously, you're not going to wait until last week to start organizing this conference. And at the same time, you cannot run this conference the week after it started being organized. So there is a natural waiting time, and you will have lots of different activities which add value to the conference that have to be synchronized over a calendar. Right? They have, uh, for example, you have external dependencies with uh, suppliers. You have to book this venue. You have to book the keynote speakers. You have to, so all of these things, they introduce the concept of time. You cannot, st and, and this is a constraint that we normally do not work with in software and, and, and product development where you have a fully cross-functional team with no external dependencies. Right? And this, these constraints are, in a traditional project management world, they're very important, right? All of these Microsoft project tools and Gantt, they work with the idea of cannot be started before, cannot finish after, or has to be done, or has to on a certain date. All right. Now, think about what would you do if you're trying to coach a team of people who have a lot of work that has that type of constraint. And they are natural constraints. They're not artificial constraints. Like, for example, I have a dependency on this other guy because I'm not collaborating with him. It's really, for example, I have an external vendor that, does, that delivers uh, the audio for this. Uh, or, or the These are things that you're going to have to plan and you're going to have to schedule. And you're going to have to keep track of them. You're going to have to keep track of them. And a traditional product backlog, classic prioritization, is not good for this because it only has one dimension, which is the dimension of the, of the product features and the priorities of the product features. So it's missing the other dimension, which is time. Right? And this is the, the first pattern that we have discovered. And we're calling it the matrix board. And why we call it the matrix board? Because it looks like a matrix. It's a, it's a task board that looks like a matrix. And Vanessa Tejada was just, she was showing something quite similar to this. So what you have on this axis is, is time. And what you have here is business value or priorities. And what you're going to do here is you're going to kind of, you're going to visualize the, the time frame that you need to plan for. It could be, it could be uh, purely calendar based, such as a quarter, uh, a month, a quarter, so three months. It could be a release if you're working in an environment that has any, any release type of milestones, for example, in factories. There is a certain moment in time when the factory is, is halted. It's a shutdown during shut the down. summer, so they have the floor available to do all kinds of things, and that's very much a deadline to have a lot of things ready to implement at that point in time. So that would be a natural end of the, end of the release so for them, basically. So you, you, you visualize, so these would be sprint one, sprint two, sprint three, sprint, I always use scrum terminology, right? I'm, I'm a scrum person, everybody knows that, and I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. So I'm gonna try to use as much as possible the idea of sprints, a sprint can be two weeks, a month, a week. We've, we've noticed that uh, with work outside of software, the week works every time, one week. So one week is our, our yeah. preferred iteration for this. All right, so let, let's try to move on a little bit and understand what are the challenges here. So some of these backlog items, when you're working not anymore on a product, but you're working on, a, for example, the, the training, uh, the organization of trainings, each backlog item might be a training. It's an event, right? So you're going to have a whole bunch of tasks that you are going to have to manage for that. You have to visualize them, you have to prioritize them, but you also have to take into account the, the constraint, right? And the constraint could be, for example, okay, I'm going to have uh, the initial announcement of the training here, which is an, I call it, uh, it says OB, which means organizational backlog item. It's like a product backlog item, but for an organization. And maybe you cannot start the next one until the third sprint because, well, for example, because uh, the third one is, um, I don't know, buying the, 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 ticket, the plane tickets for, for your guest, OK? 
okay, for example. So you can call them tasks, you can call them backlog. These, these are things that need to be done and which have time-related constraints. For, for those of you who came to one of our trainings, after the training you get a, a closing email. We can't send you that just whenever, it has to be after the training. So there's a time, do that. time constraint there, very clearly. Mm -hmm. So this could be that we are keeping track of a project, okay, on this, on this swim lane here. And we still want to keep in, into account the idea of priority. So this, this project here uh, would be higher priority for some reason than, than this project that comes here. And, and obviously, we try to work always on higher priority things, but keeping into account the time constraints. So maybe, Xavier, we could give a couple of examples of projects and then also explain what are tracks. Yes? OK. So for, for projects, we would have uh, what we've just said, organizing a training. We would also have, uh, if you look at the factory, building a windmill. Been there, done that in the last two years. Uh, but it could be, um, uh, for instance, moving a robot, a whole project around that. Uh, they have a, a building stuff like a, a patch of soil that's been uh, dirty and they have to remove it really very specifically, a thing for the law. So these, these are all types of projects that you would do. And then there's another thing. There is the track, yeah. of, or what we've called the track. I'm going to try to delete the background backlog, which is working magically well. <laughs> all right, so let's, let's, let's talk about the concept of a track. Right, so a project, everybody understands the idea of a project, something that starts and finishes, has a clear goal, vision. So when you are managing general work, you might be in an environment where you are doing, some people call it business as usual, so you have certain areas of work. It can be, for example, training, registrations and training management. We have also, I don't know, invoicing, uh, our consulting work. In a, in a factory, it could be uh, logistics, it could be the people who do factory maintenance work. In a, in, a, in a building, for example, it could be the people who organize events and the people who clean the building. In a city hall, it could be people who hand out passports and people who hand out driver's licenses. And that's just the thing that is ongoing all the time. All yeah. the time. So the idea here is that, the idea that you, have, you have this need sometimes to visualize, well, need, a desire to, instead of having just a general miscellaneous category, everything that we do, we just bunch it up together in the same swim lane. We might want to visualize each of these tracks separately. Okay? And of course, these tracks might or might not have a priority regar uh, with regards to one another, especially when we're working with cross-functional people in teams and people can work on any activity. They could be working on a, on a task that is belonging to a track. They could be working on an organizational backlog item that belongs to a project. What's more important? Right, we don't want to be predictive. We don't want to be doing uh, some planning. So it's very important to understand that this board is not a planning board. It's a board to make sure you don't forget about your constraints, t things that are constrained by time. We're not trying to be predictive here. We're still trying to work on the highest value, highest priority things we can at any moment in time. But we need to make sure that we visualize and that we don't forget about our constraints. So if things pop up, you put them on your board, and then, of course, when you're going to do a sprint planning, you have it for sprint one. You're starting to build it. See, you have, you have our, our sprint planning is, is here, right? It's, uh, it's this thing here is our, our sprint planning. That's the tentative, or at least the, when you're doing refinement, this is what you are preparing for the next sprint. Of course, you're still going to want to do a, a classic sprint planning activity where you actually look at how much we think we can do. We do you do your forecast and you might have some changes always, but at least the things that, are, that you need to take into account, you have them there. You're not going to forget about anything. So basically uh, what we do is we, um, we would take a couple of projects, imagine they're working on a couple of them, and we would do some kind of uh, an inception or a route to sprint one or however you want to call it these days, and we would uh, basically make the backlog of that specific uh, project and then put it out from today up until the moment where is the deadline where is the to see however, uh, where do things come in, what are the time constraints, and we will start seeing a, uh, I don't know if you can draw a little bit, we will start seeing that. That's why we say the one project is m more important than the other, because we want to clearly see that, imagine we're stuck on project uh, one, there's nothing else to, to do right now because there's the time constraint, we move to project two. But from the moment that we see something happening on project one again, we will always first work on that. 
So it's very, very visual. And what you mostly see when you specifically look at the project, not the tracks, since that's more ongoing uh, work, uh, you see something emerge like they start uh, later and, and they, they really starting earlier in time. So you start seeing that. So we will uh, also estimate them. So exactly the same as we do in any other uh, project, we would use the story points, uh, relative estimation, uh, to come up with the amount of work that needs to be done for every kind of uh, OB. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so then, um, of course, maybe you should talk a little bit about this and uh, this. Okay, so yeah. let's, let's there's a, a little bit, there's a concept that is very important when you're in this environment and you need this board, which is things that need to, things that are waiting. Uh, things that are waiting for something to happen, for a certain date to arrive or for a certain dependency. And um, when do you, so if, let's imagine that this, this uh, whenever you have something that requires waiting, you can take two approaches. You could have Let's say you have to do, I don't know, I have to, let's say Bob here, right? He's keynote speaker. So I need to contact Bob. He has to, we have, I have to wait to see if he accepts coming to the conference. And then if he accepts, I need to do a whole bunch of other things like book him a hotel and a, and a plane, etc. So if you think about it, the real value, the value, the organizational backlog item that brings business value is book Bob as keynote speaker. So just contacting him alone is a task, right? It doesn't really add any value if I don't get to done. So should I visual and on a board uh, at this level, should I visualize the tasks? No, you don't want to visualize tasks. You want to focus on things that deliver value. So for the organizational backlog item is book Bob. Now, we start in the first sprint, we contact Bob, we ask him, hey Bob, you're interested in speaking and, and he doesn't answer, right? Because he's busy and he's doing other things. How long do we wait? This is a very important question, right? Because if you wait too little, you're gonna you know, bother, but like, you don't want to follow up half an hour later. Hey, Bob, you haven't answered your email. <laughs> you don't want to wait two months either because then it's too late. So you need to think about this concept. What is it called? I forget. It's a, the earliest, uh, it's, it's not that, right? it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, that's another thing that I'm talking about. The earliest? So re remember the last responsible moment? So now we want to think about the earliest responsible follow-up moment. It's an analogy to, so it's the earliest moment that we can follow up on Bob and not piss him off. And this is where you want to put your waiting task. What does your, your organizational backlog item is now waiting to be followed up. Of course, if Bob answers before my waiting time expires, I can just continue working on it. I can book his hotel, answer his email, etc. So you're gonna be moving these things around and it's not working right now, but normally if I would be able to move this around, uh, there, you're going to move it around based on your your earliest moment that you want to follow this up, and you put it in a state that it says waiting. And I don't know how we could do that, but maybe you can turn it around somehow or visualize it. Uh, I, I can't do it with my iPad here, but normally you would, for example, somehow visually indicate that it's waiting. Okay. All right. So earliest, what is it called? Earliest, earliest responsible respons follow-up right. moment. Earliest responsible follow-up moment. Let's not invent too many acronyms, but this is an, an important one. The other is uh, the projects in, prog projects in progress limit. So everybody knows, everybody knows that we want to minimize the amount of projects that we're running in parallel, right? This, this is a, something we always teach everybody in a, a typical, you know, if you're multitasking, you're creating waste. The problem is when, when your project, so I, I try to book Bob, that's a project. Okay, until I wait for Bob to answer, what do I do? Facebook? I have to, I'm gonna have to start something else, right? So I need to contact the other key, keynote speaker maybe. And if you think about each of these as an individual activity that adds value, you're going to have to manage parallel projects. It's unfortunate reality that whenever you have lots of delays and lots of waiting times and lots of dependencies, you're going to be running multiple things at the same time. And this is a problem you're going to hear from every customer who is in a, in a complex uh, non-product development environment. You will also hear it from people in product development. But in product development, the answer is, is easy. It's eliminate your dependencies, create cross-functional teams. In this case, I can, how do I eliminate the dependency of Bob? Right? Bob can, is not part of my team, so it doesn't make sense to say uh, get rid of your dependencies and, and create a cross-functional team. So what we need is we need, we need to make sure that we don't start contacting 20 keynote speaker, 20 potential keynote speakers at the same time. 
right? We need to work with the minimum amount of projects that we, are, that we need in order to make sure that we are always being able to focus on our top priorities. So minimize PIP instead of minimize WIP. So in fact, you can, you can, uh, you can start looking at how much you can do because as I said, we, we estimate the things and you can start looking at every single sprint, what is your total of, of, uh, of points of work to do and of course, we're going to just as well as in other agile methods to try to measure velocity and we'll know exactly what a certain team can do in a certain amount of time. And very quickly, if you set out the projects that you're working on, you will see how much you can handle. Mm -hmm. Which is how the way that you'll be able to limit your whip. So we've seen this in a factory. Oh yeah, we're going to run these 10 projects. We start doing the work of estim estimating each, each type of uh, each work they have to do, we know the velocity of the team and say, sorry, uh, Mr. Manager, but if you want by the shutdown for uh, the factory to have these things in check, you're gonna have to choose to have four of them instead of five or none. So because if you start on all of them, you're not gonna finish any. So, and it, it became very clear with this board that, that this was a problem. This was a... Now this, Okay, so what's next? Our sprint planning? Populate by constraint, priority, capacity. That's what we talked about, right? We so we're backlog, going right? And we're going down our backlog. So, right, so the matrix board is a pattern that can be applied at different levels of granularity. So you can apply it or different, let's say, different levels of planning. In this case, we're doing, I don't know if you, you can want to, whatever you want to call this, portfolio, program, whatever, release planning, you can call it whatever you want. Basically, you're visualizing a certain dimension, sprints, sprints and your, your projects and your, and your tracks. What happens when you actually have to plan a sprint is that you might want to adapt your sprint board, the board you use to visualize and manage the work during the sprint. You might also want to use a similar pattern when you have tasks or, or certain things that have to happen on a certain day during the sprint. And this is very common in administrative offices. For example, every, for example, every Wednesday you have to do the weekly, I don't know, check the bank account, right? So you have a, a repetitive task. So how are you going to do this? Well, you, have, you need a board that has somehow the ability to, to plan things per day, one, two, three, four, five. So these columns don't represent, they don't represent phases in a value stream, which is what you would have in a Kanban board. Right, these represent time. So you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And you would put your re recurring task, for example, on Wednesday. You always put it there at the top. So you start your Wednesdays by doing that recurring task. And you would populate, you, you, you start your, your sprint by populating your board with all the recurring tasks that you, that you need to do during the, the week. And then you continue with your priorities, right? So, all right, so I can move this, this OB from here. It's not gonna work. Let's see if it works. There you go, hop, I move it there, and then here. Then I have this one here, and it's not gonna work, but okay, not working. All right, I think you get the idea, right? You, you just move them from one board to the other, and now you have your, your sprint planning, okay. Yeah, this is new technology, as you can see. Uh, all right, so obviously, you, if you need to, you can also create some, some swim lanes in the, I don't know, you could create a, a swim lane that says, this one here is business as usual, and this is, a, uh, whatever, this is a, a certain project, and this is a, a certain track which is uh, less priority than, a pro than, than the project. So you can actually visualize and, and enforce your priorities, making sure that people are working on the project before they are working on, suppose the track is 5S, Typical factory track, 5S, cleaning up, you know, cleaning up and, and making sure that everything is shiny and nice, uh, 5S. But okay, it's less priority than working on the project. So first focus on your project, then focus on these uh, I don't know, or organizing things, etc. But it could be that, that there's a more important project on our other board that just in this sprint, we can't do anything. So then it disappears from, from the board that we, uh. that we used this week. We don't need to visualize any project or track that doesn't have any activities. Normally the tracks, you will always need them because tracks tend to have unplanned items that pop up. A customer sends you uh, a, a request and you need to answer. 
and you can't plan that, so you probably have a track for that. But projects, you, can, you should be able to plan in a sprint. How are we doing with time? Good. We're doing good? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so what else do we have regarding? So let's, let's remember, let's summarize our pa the patterns we have so far. We have uh, the matrix board. We have uh, minimize your projects in progress. And we have this idea of earliest responsible follow-up moment. What else do we have? We have the idea that the roles change a little bit. If you think about it, product owner has never been a very happy name. Uh, as soon as you start having unclear products or multiple products or multiple, or you're actually in a project context, it always brings up the problem of defining your product, which is a, is a good problem. But here, it's not applicable. If you're in an office doing administrative work, the concept of product ownership. Mm. So what do we try to do? What are we recommending? We're tr recommending make sure that the product ownership is means defining priorities and uh, defining what's important, what's valuable to your organization. This work still needs to be done. Uh, should it be done by one person? Should it be done by a team? I don't know. Okay, so we propose to eliminate or, or possibly challenge the, the role of the product owner in this environment and to focus on product ownership, or if you want, and the word I'm actually thinking about using is uh, work leadership. So work leadership means leading regarding strategy and regarding priorities. You, need, you want people to be engaged in the activity of defining priorities, and this can be done as a team-based collaborative activity. It doesn't need to be a single appointed person who is defining what's important and what's not. Many times, for example, in an office, work leadership is done through working agreements. We say, any time a customer contacts us, that's our first priority. First priority, satisfy a customer. Second priority, uh, satisfy our internal employees. Third priority, clean the office, for example. So you don't really need product ownership. You just have, this is kind of the equivalent of the S SLAs in, in the Kanban world, I think. Uh, the, you have service level agreements and you have uh, priorities or categories of work. I, I'm not an expert in how they manage those terms, but I think that's, that's a little bit the idea. So we are prob probably not going to have a product owner. We're going to have this idea of uh, work, work leader or work leadership. And the Scrum Master, okay, we're not really doing Scrum here. I don't know, uh, do you, do you, would you call this Scrum? Uh, there are some ideas, there, there is an idea of planning a, 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 a short amount of time, so there is a sprint a little bit. There, there's it's actually, there's also the events we're keeping them in. On a weekly yeah. basis we do the sprint planning, on a daily basis we do a planning again of, uh, with the team in front of, of the board. We have, uh, the review is something that that's been different, that's been different. Uh, uh, we had the product owner almost every day, or the, the work leader, sorry, <laughs> almost every day at the board, so he's constantly aware. And only maybe when a complete project would be finished, they would bring it forward and, and, and uh, towards the, the, the um, stakeholders or whatever. But uh, on a weekly basis to talk about how many uh, inscriptions you had for the training doesn't seem very relevant to tell in a review. The retrospective happened, not weekly, but monthly. So this is what we've seen mostly. Um, well, this is the idea of cadence yeah. that they have in Kanban. That different, different uh, activities you, do, you might do in Scrum don't necessarily have to be happening every sprint, but they have to happen at the right cadence. And I think it's a good idea, especially if you're going to be working with one week uh, planning. You don't need to have weekly but retrospective. The other things are there, and they have a backlog. They, yeah. have, a, they have a sprint backlog. They have a, a goal also. Uh, you're trying to do certain projects, maybe. It's a little bit of uh, uh, multiple goals. But, but the things are there. So yeah, so about the Scrum Master, we're thinking about it as more as people leadership. So coaching, uh, turning people from managers into leaders and from masters into, into coaches. The word was the, the term Scrum Master was never very good. You can use it if you want. I don't know. We don't know if this is Scrum or not Scrum. I'm allegedly I'm an expert in Scrum, so I would I can tell you that this is technically not Scrum. It could be an extension to Scrum or inspired by Scrum. It's also not not Kanban. You're not really working with value streams here. Huh? You continue to have this idea of. Uh, a single list of prioritized work, which is the, the, the scrum idea of a single backlog. It's just that you are extending this idea to take into account your constraints regarding time. Okay. 
So we just got the yellow sign, so yes. we're, we're running short. So maybe, I think we still have 15 minutes, right, in total? Mm, not if we, if we get a yellow sign, how much time do we have? Ten, Ten minutes, minutes and, and a We want to leave some time for questions, exactly. so. So maybe we could talk a, l maybe a little bit more about what happens here with the real daily planning, and then when we move waiting items from the, the week from the sprint board back to the to the planning board. Okay. How do we handle that. <coughs> you want me to tell? Yeah. Okay. So um, a lot of time when there's things happening, like you have a request of a customer, or again, uh, let's take Bob as the example. It's a great example. So we decide that in this sprint, uh, we have to uh, call Bob. We do it on Monday. So how long do we wait? Do we wait a day? If we wait a day, we would move the OB to the Tuesday and say, if Bob didn't, and maybe put it on its side, and if Bob didn't answer by Tuesday, we will take action. So you will decide at that point when you're going to take action. It could be that you say, we'll give Bob a week, because we know he's going to this conference in Spain this week. He's never going to be able to uh, follow up on his email. Let's do it next Monday. What does that mean? That you take your OB from this Monday, and you put him in waiting for the next sprint, basically. So this happens a lot. Uh, also, if we look at these factory areas, where they have to uh, send out a request for a proposal, or they have to wait for an item that has to be built in another factory to be delivered, a bolt or something that they need for their new robot, there's waiting time. And there's waiting time. They normally know that the supplier delivers within three weeks. So what would, the, what would they do? They would potentially put it three sprints later. If the thing didn't arrive, they would contact those people again. Maybe they put it in two weeks and already send a small notice, hey, you didn't forget, right? It's going to be next week. So at that point in time, you think, when am I going to follow this up? And you put it on a next day uh, within, the, within the thing, within the sprint board, yeah. or you put so what, it back Sorry, on. what I drew here is not accurate. If, it, if we would want to put it just in the next sprint as, as a generic next sprint, what we would actually do is we would put it up there, right? We would move it to... To, we would move it here to the sprint two, yeah. right? Oh. Yeah. There. To the so we've seen right, what we can, Yeah, what we sometimes have is we have two of these, yeah. we have so two of these boards uh, for, for a sprint. Yeah. We've so seen this, this matrix sprint board, we have one for the current sprint, and we already have one for the next. So we've seen many teams, like they know that today on Monday they're going to contact a supplier. Um, they wait until Wednesday uh, to get an answer. They get the answer on Wednesday that the guys are going to come next Thursday. So they already, they're looking always a week ahead. They're not going to put it back on the sprint and then on the next uh, planning, put it back on the right day. They're immediately moving it a week further. So they would have two uh, week boards. They're working on this one right now and they're filling up this one. And anything that's further than that week, they put back on the big board in the sprint. And then when it's the end of the week, they basically swap them and they start here and they add the rest of the work that's still on the board and they do their sprint planning. So it's quite fast. And it's really about all this waiting stuff, not to forget to follow up on anything and also to see at each moment the priority. If two things pop up, this is still the most important track or project. I'm going to answer that first before I answer this. So it's really, really visual. All right. I think that answers this. Maybe one uh, small remark. This week thing, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I've seen it work in some teams that have really, really worked uh, specifically to, to answer within three days. It has to be done on that day. Uh, if you're running bigger projects, I saw teams also just using the simple thing as uh, maybe, maybe you can, yeah, basically a normal scrum board has to do, busy, done. And the thing for the whole week for that project is in a to-do. It doesn't specifically have to be on Tuesday or on Wednesday. So more office environments, the, the building maintenance, maintenance things are more using week plannings. And people who are running more general projects are going to not need the Monday to Friday thing. So uh, here you would have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, busy, done. And in other cases, you just have to do busy, done. Oh, yeah. Busy, done. Have just extend yes. And the, the, the so one we day have this. This is kind of like planning, right? Yeah. And then we have the still have the in progress here, and the, so this is all not started. And then you would still have in uh, doing. Let's call it doing. Yeah. So what is what is the, the the fear I have or that we have with this is that this for anybody who doesn't understand the context, this looks very predictive. It looks horrible. It looks anti-agile. So we need to be very, very careful when we start, if we start 
showing this, and I don't, I honestly, I, we have not been able to figure out anything better in two years of experimenting for dealing with this type of situation and these, these type of people. So if you come up with anything better, please let me know. So we're going to have to make sure that people do not misuse this, which is always a challenge. Doing and then done, right? So that they don't start using it to kind of be predictive. Oh, this has to happen on this date because somebody decided it, not because of a real constraint. So you really see that board up, up there constantly moving because things change all the time. So they have to readjust between projects to be able to, to handle that. And each time keeping in mind at the bottom, uh, uh, at the bottom of the, um, the board here then, no, the, on the one on top, to see what is my total, what can I do, what is my capacity, and, and constantly keep that in mind and see where you are with your time to see if you can still make it and, and potentially have to skip certain things. Uh, this, otherwise we have still uh, four minutes left. But including question time? Or? Without question time. No, no, let's, let's take questions. Uh, there's four mo minutes more. For, I don't want uh, to, uh, wait, wait, what is that? What what about this, this we didn't talk about. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, the okay, ready, this concept of the, the ready. ready. So the, the, uh, you heard about definition of ready, right? It's when, when a, an or a backlog item is ready to be taken into a sprint. Uh, so what do we want to say about this? That this, there's that something like a ready organizational Item. Okay. Uh, Never mind. Uh, for for next session. Yes. Um, there there's one more thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, if we have so it's the idea that when you don't manage so if you have something planned for a certain day, right? Like here we have a task that says it has to be done on Wednesday down down here. So what if Wednesday arrives and, and finishes and you didn't finish it? You didn't manage to do it. So you will see that it's still standing there. It's very clear that it has it should have been done. So you have you either you can use the board to indicate that you're behind schedule, or you can actually drag it to Thursday. I don't know if I can't do it right now, but well, it's not going to work. But if, I, if this would work, I would be able to move it to Thursday. <laughs> Imagine I'm moving the post-it. And basically, you can see all the work that had to be done during the beginning of the week. It starts accumulating. And this is showing you clearly that you are not being able to keep up with your planned work. right? But at the same time, remember, this is visual management. So it's not just about knowing whether I'm going to make it or not. That's not really what we've, we're focusing here. We're focusing on not forgetting anything. So how do I make sure I don't forget? It? Well, the task is still there. It's not done. Until the task is, is in progress, you don't take it out of there. So if the work starts to accumulate, right, you still have visual control over all the things you should be doing. And then, of course, you might need to replan some of your projects or some of your lower priority things because you're not going to make it. But it works very well, this board, to make sure you don't forget about things. Good. Good. I think yeah. that's enough for now. Questions? <laughs> yeah. <Okay>. Thank you. <laughs> you can ask questions in Spanish if you want, and I will answer in either Spanish or English. Power of the motive, you had? We had 20 people, uh, 20, but they were divided again already. And so once the work goes to the sprint, they, they, they divide the work. It. So, so we still do Scrum. Uh, so yeah, the, so this is built on top of Scrum. So we still try to respect. Uh, you have a team of maximum nine people by default. And if you have more, if you have a bigger team, you split it up, and then basically the work from the sprint goes into two, uh, two different boards, basically. So that you can better focus, yeah. But it, but, it, but it works for office work also. You can do it with two people. So yeah. Uh, yes, the daily. Yeah, we would use the. Oh, it's the not that one, one, right? It's this one here. It's, this is the actual uh, board that you use I on a day-to-day -day basis. It has the the. This is the not started. And the doing and done. I've never been a big fan of complex value streams on task boards. I got booed out of a conference once from the Lean Kanban community because I said a task board should only have three columns. So now I'm changing that. I'm saying it should have three columns. It should have two doing done, but then here you can be a little bit more sophisticated if you want. To be, to be fair, to be fair, if you really have a clear value stream that your work needs to follow, you could have a Kanban board here. It's perfectly compatible. Same. I just want, I have observed that, for example, when we are organizing a training, 
a lot of the tasks that need to be done, a lot of the things are not linear. You can start many things in different order, so why would you put a value stream? You just need to, it's more like a checklist. And what we do actually is we put a little checklist, our post-it is a checklist, and you move it. Uh, for example, if you need to, so the checklist says book Bob, uh, uh, book his hotel, book his flight. So it's three different things. So you start everything you can, anything you cannot start, you, you delay, you defer. You had a question. Mm -hmm. The way, so the way I interpret what you're saying, if, correct me if I'm wrong, right? So the way, so if Bob doesn't confirm, so when he, when the, then the task of booking Bob is done, or the PB, the OBI, and then we create new OBs based on that. So that event triggers the creation, it triggers a refinement, right? Yeah, it, 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 it you you can always you can always add it. I mean, this is yeah, this we, is just we've had it. You can have as many boards as you want. We've right? had in certain moments with this with this team at the at Look. the Johnson Controls. They 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 talk about one thing and it's just one post-it. And then when we go into sprint planning, they start chopping it up. But in other cases, they talk a little bit more about something and they already create ten post-its uh, of work and they put it all on top of each other. Then when the sprint comes, they, they use that. So right. look, look at this. You capture Solve. what there is. You yeah. just create an, an area there that's called the icebox from Pivotal Tracker uh, idea, where you keep things that you might need just in case, and you don't want to forget about them. The problem with these things is that if, if you start to accumulate too much stuff that you don't know if you're actually going to, I'm not, I personally am not a big fan of keeping track of things that we might or might not do, because that tends to clutter up your, 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 your boards and your mind. So I, I prefer to just make a decision, do we really want to do this? Then let's prioritize it. We give it a priority and then we if, visualize it. Your, your question is not answered. You, you, you're asking if something, if this doesn't happen and all the things behind it are, so basically you move it, right? So you start seeing issues because sometimes uh, that means that if this is the most important project, suddenly you're going to have to do all the work for, for booking Bob that comes behind it later, which impacts on all the rest of your project. So you start seeing that, ooh, uh, if I count all this work, I'm not going to make it. So then you have to make a decision exactly because of that. You're going to look on all your projects and say, what the hell am I going to do to make sure that I still make it? And you start moving things. You start looking and puzzling and saying, okay, damn, that means because I couldn't do this or I, or I had to, so some things are going uh, more difficult, you have to take something out at the end. Wait, wait. Can we give uh, the turn to Somebody another person and then we go back? We can talk off it. It's one of the ideas, but it's, it's a planning cycle, the sprint. Right? It helps us focus and it helps us, yeah. We, we assume that uh, having a lot of things like this is going to happen. The premise here, this is not a team that needs to be protected from interruptions, right? This is a team that is it's more like a Kanma. It's a team that knows that it will be receiving work on different tracks. Kan Kanban gives you almost nothing. You have to start from scratch. Scrum gives you a lot of good ideas. And I, I think that most of the ideas are applicable. We have the idea of the cross-functional team. We have the idea of uh, different levels of planning with iterations. Yeah. We have a lot. We have the idea of prioritization, the backlog. We have the idea of the product backlog item, the OV. There's a lot of things. Uh, but okay, I mean, you could, you could either start from scratch, which is Kanban, and also be careful because Kanban introduces some, it's very simple, but one of the biggest ideas in Kanban is limit work in progress. And this idea is not applicable in a lot of environments. I was actually reading recently one of the books that the people from the Kanban community wrote, one that was co-authored by Jim Benson, and they were describing how they did 
Kanban in Rally HR, in the HR department of Rally. And the first thing they say is, oh yeah, we had to drop the limit work in progress. So, I mean, come on, man, that's like one of three things and you already drop it. So this is not Kanban, it's something else. I don't say it's, I never, I have never said that uh, limiting work in progress is an idea that is universally applicable. It's a good idea in certain contexts, but if work comes in, so for example, imagine that the work I do is answer customer answer customer questions, right? What does it mean to limit work in progress? It means don't start answering multiple customer questions at the same time, but the customer questions are coming in, and if you're not visualizing them, so, I don't know. Hope I answered. Uh, One more question. We want to give him his last question? Okay, come on. You can extend, uh, yeah. No, no, you, so obviously, you, this is not about being predictive, right? This is about not forgetting things. So you just insert, so let's say that you need, you have some. So to give a specific example, the shutdown, yeah. we had three months, so approximately 12, to even, even up to 20 weeks displayed. It's not that much, if you think of it. I mean, it's just 20 rows. Uh, and at the end, it said shutdown. And that was our end of our release. And then we had one line that said everything after the shutdown. So basically, we, we come closer and closer and closer, and we're doing a new planning when all those things come in. And we have to think about it again. We're not going to think about it now already if it's for six months later. Yeah, I don't know if that answers right. the question. We'll take more questions in the hallways. Thank you. Thank you very much.